back to my channel. It's your girl Bridgie. As you can see, I'm enjoying Canada. Happy Canada's Day. Happy Canada's Day. 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 <laughs> so just to let you guys know here, yeah, I'm not a Canadian. I'm basically moving to Canada. There's no discussion about it. Next flight. Uh, next flight, yeah. I'm just going to go home to have a quick discussion and uh, with my husband and the children have no choice we just pack our load and we are back <laughs> basic mom, the yeah, have they no have choice. no choice they have no part in this i love canada i love everything about this country and i've got with me here this is my baby her name is Onyo Lua, <laughs> and this is her mommy you already met Mojishola, my friend and my sister from way back home in Nigeria, they are Canadians proudly. You can see we are rocking the air. Canada Day. Canada Day. Me, I've joined them. Please don't call me British anymore. I am Canadian. I'm no joke. I'm Canadian. So we want to talk about the experience of living in Canada for immigrants like us. Mm, we are all together in this now. So what it is like living in Canada. So I'm gonna start with my baby. So you were born in Nigeria. Yeah. You grew up in Nigeria too. Ten. Ten. Before your parents moved here. Yeah. So how was it for you coming to Canada? Um, I got here when I was ten years old. I got here when I was ten years old, and I started school about I think a month after we got here, a month or a couple weeks. It wasn't as bad as I thought, to be honest. You thought it was gonna be bad? Yeah, I based it out of, like most like TV shows or books that I read about like. I mean, I've visited Western countries before, but I've never actually lived there or got to experience being part of that community. But once I got to school, it was a lot more fun than school in Nigeria. It was more fun? Yes. Really? Yeah. In what way? The teachers were way nicer. Oh, yeah. The teachers were nicer. Some of them are mean. Everybody said that. Some of them are really <laughs> mean. <laughs> Not all of them, but some of them are mean. Yeah. yeah. And the ones here hardly ever yell at you. Like maybe in high school, yeah. It's not the culture to yell here. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Everything yeah. was so much more simple. Mm -hmm. And what's it called? Um, the kids here were really friendly. Like the teacher introduced me to everyone, and I already found a group of friends in like the first week of school. Really? Yeah. And then Mississauga, Toronto, where I live, it also has like a good sense of community. Like everyone usually rallies together for good causes and. I wouldn't say that's not common in Nigeria, but yeah. I guess that's just something that really sticks out here. Yeah, because in Nigeria, everyone is for themselves. God for us all. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody cares about what's happening to their neighbor. Yeah. Yeah, so you feel like that sense of community whereby people really, even if it doesn't concern them, yeah, they're yeah. going to come out and support that cause yeah. Yeah. just because they believe in it. Yeah. So you love that. Yeah, Great. but one bad thing is the weather. The oh. weather. That's why everybody keeps telling me that the weather, the weather is winter, long winters, right? Yeah. How did you feel the snow? Seeing snow, so much snow that you have to like, it's freezing, you put your boots on and your legs everywhere is freezing. How was that for you? I thought the snow was going to be fun before, but we it's got not? here in February. <laughs> The first few February months we like the did, you, know, you enjoyed it because it was all white. And yeah, then it looked reality. pretty from a distance mm. until you actually went outside and it was freezing. It was like, oh. Yeah, <laughs> but you've, you've endured a few winters now. Yeah, but Are the you, thing is, you never get used to you it. You never get Absolutely. used to it, yeah. yeah the winter is always really cold, the summer is burning hot. It's yeah. like there's hardly ever any in between. Yeah, in between. You feel like uh, maybe your idea of what it's going to be like in winters back home when you were in Nigeria or you were too young to know that, that is not the same, the it's reality the of the same. snow. I thought it like you when you're on TV you only see like all the like fluffy snow and just jumping into play with it you don't really see like the black ice and like falling and yeah that's when it snow. starts to dissolve yeah yeah and you guys always have snow every year yes there's yeah. never yeah. going to be a year without snow yeah so what else do you like about living here um it's cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> the air is fresher. <laughs> the air is very very oh. fresh. And then there's um, Nepa. There's no Nepa. <laughs> so Nepa. You remember Nepa? Yeah, you? I think since in the six years we've been here, there's only been two light outs. Light outs? Yeah. And then second one's are back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they're usually back in like a minute or something. Really? So you still remember Nepa from when you were yes. kids? And the generators? I, I don't miss the generators. You don't miss the generators? <laughs> 
Your your dad was telling me that when you were in Nigeria that they had two yeah, generators, had two one for the day and one for the night. And we had an yeah. inverter. You had an inverter as well yeah, to supplement, so. so you don't miss that. No. You like the fact that you have electricity. And the mosquitoes. Mosquitoes, yeah. Oh, and those little lizards, like you know the one with like the orange heads. Yeah, I got my lizard. <laughs> You remember Agama lizard? Yeah, Do well, you ever see lizards here? Yeah. No, I mean, we, like, there's like little geckos here and there, but you don't really see lizards. You don't see lizards. But I miss the food. Mm -hmm. You miss like, the food? Yeah, even the egg rolls. It tastes so different here. Yeah. Like egg rolls and stuff like And that. roasted corn. Yeah, so you miss roasted corn. Oh, you can roast your corn here. Yeah, yeah but like it's in Nigeria, you can just walk out and buy and it. And buy it. Like, yeah. You have to like set up food yeah. grill or something and do it yourself. Yeah, yeah. okay. Maybe you take a gap here when you're in uni to come to you. To England because we do have a lot of Nigerian food there, so you won't really miss not having Nigerian food. All the Nigerian food is not really organic in terms of you know when you buy the meat and all the stock, but mm -hmm. if it comes to Nigerian food like a burner, you know, a goosey and all that, you don't need to bring it from Nigeria. There are loads and loads of Nigeria because it's a big Nigerian community over there. That's but cool. overall, what the experience here has been, it's been pretty good, it's been honest. good, it's fun. Yeah. You love I don't it. Regret it. No, yeah. I love it. You wanna you, you think you're gonna go back to Nigeria and make Nigeria better in the future? I don't know about living there. I'll definitely go to visit. But visit. I like living in Canada. You love living in Canada. Me yeah. too. That's what I'm coming. <laughs> Alright, thank you, baby. Thank you so no much. Problem. Yeah, now I'm gonna talk to your mom because the adult experience is different from the child yeah, experience. Know, right? <laughs> so we will free you to go and enjoy. Happy Canada's Day! Have fun. Have fun. Enjoy <laughs> the morning. Yeah, so we've talked about it. Yeah, we we'll talked to Oni, my baby oh, girl. Oh. I was there when she was born. I know, oh I was my about God. to say that, that. Do you remember standing in the hospital? I was there when she was home? born. She and her dad were pissing. I, 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 can't, I can't even ever forget no, how clear it was that day. It was like it was going to shit in his pants. <laughs> I would say, don't worry, don't worry. Don't worry, don't worry. Oh my God. And then she came out. Oh, it was all smart. I tell her the story every time. She yeah. said, Mom, you said that to me before. I said, and I keep saying yeah, it again. Yeah, this is the auntie that was there when yeah. you were born. <laughs> yeah, so you were a full grown adult yeah. with a career in Niger. <laughs> before moving, first of all, why did you and your husband decide to move from Nigeria to Canada with your family? It's a couple of reasons, not just one reason. I think it started with me going to um, Scotland for my master's and I saw a different, it, it, there's a difference between visiting mm. and actually living. living. So in the course of that, I'm like, it wouldn't be a bad idea to live here. And Kenny came to visit. He always loved a peaceful place. Yeah. He loves some form yeah. of predictability. It's not mm -hmm. like me. I, I like to rough it out in Nigeria, right? So he came and he saw the place and it's like, Maybe we should just move, like move. <laughs> Don't even think about it, right? So, and I saw this Canada immigration thing just flash by me. I think I was online. I developed a little bit of interest, and I saw the weather, and I'm like, okay, I'm not going there because it's cold. So I went back to Nigeria after my masters and business as usual. And since we are not, you will be hoping, right, that it's going to get better and. It wasn't moving the way you wanted to move and then this day again i stumbled on immigrate to canada and they said oh they've they've re uh, re uh, restructured it now it's simpler i said okay let me just try from let me just try <laughs> it started getting serious i said okay maybe i'll come school here maybe i'll go back and all of that and then the Boko Haram thing started. That was, oh. for me, that was the big push. Mm. And then um, I remember because I live in Abuja, we set barricade here and there. And mm. when I'm going to work, I'm scared. My office is so close to a force headquarters, right? And Boko Haram, we are going to attempt to hit any police barrack or police station mm -hmm. near them. Mm -hmm. So when I'm going there, I'm scared, I'm worried, and my heart is skipping. And then the application is continuing. So it's progressing. I'm like, okay, let's see. And... At some point, I just said, you know what, I need some peace. I yeah. just want to go out and yeah. come back in peace. And yeah. Yeah. How much can you actually trade for peace? And yeah, that's, I think that's the main thing, yeah. is the peace that you... I mean, when you have, in some certain positions that you have in Nigeria, you have opportunities to make good money. Mm -hmm. But there's always that element of insecurity that absolutely. you have. Absolutely, absolutely. We live in an estate, we are living in a new estate, newer neighborhood in Abuja then, and there was always this thought of, oh, maybe a thief is going to come in the night. We heard they came to the other that, There was no kidnapping then, even. No, it wasn't. No, not at there all. There was no kidnapping. It was after you left that the kidnapping at least started. Not, not this bad. 
but we were always hearing of burglary mm. maybe in and around the estates around mm. us you know mm. so we had all kind of security system all kind of doors there was just this lack of peace mm. that, and this opportunity came why not so how has it been for you since you got here as an adult what's what's, what's been the the most shocking thing that you've experienced being you know in, you know integrating in the community as yeah. a black family yeah. in i know you know Canada is multicultural, so it's not like there are no black people or there are yeah. only white people and all that. But what's the experience been like, really, really getting to the nitty gritty of living here? I call it a marathon. Mm. It's not a hundred meter dash. So it's the experience differs for different persons because when you come in, you hear all kind of things, and depending on how you come in yourself too. But we thought we prepared, but you can never prepare enough mm. for your And you are experience. someone that is so organized. Oh God, I did so many She's an accountant. <laughs> this, this chick that you are seeing here, mm -hmm. she is one of the most organized human beings I've ever seen. She thinks about what, Everything, a plan what, what people will not think about. She thinks about, she has a plan A, B, C, C and D. It wasn't still enough. When I got here, there's a difference between visiting, and schooling living. and mm -hmm. living. Yeah. So, um, the people here are very friendly, there's no doubt about that. Like you said, it's a multicultural city, they are very welcoming, they are very nice, polite, all that I can say. But getting your first job, your first professional job can be mm -hmm. tough as an immigrant when you don't have Canadian experience. Right. So that was quite a challenge. I was a little bit lucky, I got my first job within six months, but even that first six months was like something else because you keep spending money and remember so, you are spending how do you uh, survive if you don't have a job waiting and you're yeah. coming from a place like nigeria for six months none of you had a job yeah and you have three kids yeah how do you survive so what the government advice is before you come you should have something that will take you for six months right but whatever it is that you have trust in me, terms of rent for six months. feeding yes. transportation and Absolutely. all that did you get any support from the government yes the government gives you support but remember when you come newly here you want to you are still thinking a bit like nigeria so yeah. you rent a big place you buy good furniture you Unlike the people you meet here, if you listen to them, they'll tell you, keep your money, save it, get a survival job. We did do some bit of survival job, there's no doubt about that, but it was still not enough, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, we spent a lot of money that if I had to look back, <laughs> it was not necessary. Made, I would have made a better decision. <laughs> <laughs> but you are always very economical with money in yeah. terms of, you know, budgeting. Yeah. You are an expert in budgeting Absolutely. because obviously, as an accountant, you've got everything else, you Absolutely. know, figured out. Yeah, if you're still, of if money. still not any one month, two yeah. month, three months, you keep yeah. spending, right? Yeah. So the Nigerian in you will not quickly tell you keep your money and take a survival job. You right. You want to rough it out and say, oh, the job will come. Yeah. And before it comes, you keep spending because there's a standard of living that you are used, used to, to with the kids, and mm -hmm. you don't just want to drop it. So, mm -hmm. but once you get a job, it gets better. Right. And once you understand that you're in a different country, the priorities differ, mm -hmm. your value system changes, mm -hmm. except if you just want to deceive yourself and remain like a Nigerian. Mm -hmm. Your value system, some of the things that you put value on back home is not what you put value on. You put you, value more on family on time. Fam on, on family. Spending time with the kids, you know, and maybe taking vacations. Yeah. You know, things like that. Not, not about saving and building, building houses, houses. Buying four houses. And okay, like that. You brought the issue of how Mm -hmm. And people know me on this channel about my stand up house. Why did you bring it up now? <laughs> now you brought it up. Okay, so okay. me and my wife. I know it's not possible. Uh, we have to talk about it now because I've always been of the opinion that you know people should live their best life mm -hmm. where they are. You know, live in the, the best house that you can afford. Yeah. You know, drive the best car you can afford, yeah. save, go on vacation, do whatever you can Absolutely. with your family and just enjoy life. Mm -hmm. Against living a very minimalistic life yeah. and sending all your money back to Africa to build mansions. Yeah. That's always been my point of view. Yeah. Now, you came here with your, your family and you guys already had properties back there. Mm -hmm. So, was it about building, you know, saving and buying more properties to add to your collection of houses in, 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 Nigeria. <laughs> in Nigeria so that one day, <laughs> when, you go back. when you go back in 50 years, yeah. you have something to fall back to because this I is their skill. I think it also depends. Some mm -hmm. persons come and they just want to be a Canadian citizen or just get their citizenship and go back. Hmm. I was one of those people when I was coming initially, I wasn't thinking that I was going to stay. stay this yeah. 
even though my husband wants to stay long, but I'm thinking I have to go back, right? Mm -hmm. But after a few years, you, you begin to ask yourself, what do you really want in life? Mm -hmm. So I, for those people that are planning to go back, maybe five years down the line, 10 years down the line, so I can understand why they keep investing money home. But I know that investing money in real estate in the Western world is a good thing to do because there's a level of predictability. You, it's one of the safest investments mm -hmm. that you can do. Things mm -hmm. might change. Mm -hmm. There might be depression, but once you don't sell, mm -hmm. it's just a matter of time. Before the market is returning. <laughs> Restore again. itself, yeah. and then you save money in your property. So I believe that some persons are actually working their but of excuse my language just to send money back home because mm. there are a lot of demand coming from home some of them justifiable some of them not justifiable but yeah do you want to kill yourself mm. <laughs> so that you can send money yeah home this is i mean this is a gospel i always preach so, on this channel that live your life yeah because very i mean important. how much can you send that it's a good to help you can never even fully solve mm, the, the problems back there. yeah so you do your bit and yeah so what do you like best about canada what do I like? Can I even pick one thing? Okay, what's a couple of things that you like the yeah. most about this country? Um, I like the relative peace. Mm -hmm. the, there's peace and stability. Mm -hmm. I like the educational system. The mm -hmm. kids are having fantastic public education. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that it's multicultural. Mm -hmm. Like, you, as you're walking down the street, particularly in the greater Toronto area where we live, you see black, you see Hispanic, you see all kind of tribe, Asians and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, I like the good health system. Healthcare. I, healthcare. I like mm -hmm. the fact that it's publicly funded. Mm -hmm. I, I, I do, God forbid, but you don't have to start thinking, oh my God, if something happens, how do I fund it? So right. Those are some of the things that I like. And I like the fact that it's a place, a place where hard work can Pays. be rewarded. Yeah. 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 So if you put in effort, it yield results. Mm -hmm. So a couple of things that I like there, but... Mm -hmm. Mm. It's a fun place to be. I love, I love it the yourself. place. Yeah. You know what? It's funny that this is the, actually the first time I'm coming to Canada because mm. I've got family here. But they've always said to me, come, come, come. I don't know. For some reason, I come to the US, I go back to England. I because won't come Because people in Canada is so far away. So finally, I said, okay, let me. My brother said, this time around, if you don't come to this Canada and you come to New York, I, I said, okay, let me just come. And then I came. I just fell in love. You know what yeah. they call first, uh, what they call yeah. it? Love at first sight. Yes, love at first sight. I loved it. From the airport as we were driving down, I was just remember oh my you God. came in the summer though. I don't know how it. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe winter. I have to come in the winter. And you have a balanced view. <laughs> how bad is the winter? When you were talking about the winter, I can't even describe it. It can be really, really cold. We've got. We've, we are prepared for it. Like the city is prepared. We as individuals are prepared. We have our jackets. We have our snow tires. We have. Um, uh, uh, snow remover trucks that mm. the city deploy first thing in the morning before you even come out is cleared but still it's very cold mm. so if you're not driving, you are outside yes but the two minutes between your house and the car come on. <laughs> you your house is warm your car is warm your yes. office is warm yes it can't be that bad there's winter be that everywhere bad, you, you go particularly if you are driving yeah it's make life a little bit but easy. i mean a but lot of people cold. drive here yeah a lot of most people, people drive, drive. But it's still very cold. To be honest mm. with you, it's cold. It's, it's just, just uh, it's part of us. It's who we are. It's just to minimize the amount of time you spend outside. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> it's I'm trying to are. manage it. That's winter take, is part of us. Mm, you have so, to take the bad with the good. Yeah. What about the taxes? People were saying that you guys pay a lot of taxes, and I was arguing it the other day with uh, my other friends there that no. I think we pay more taxes than you guys. We pay taxes. There's no doubt about that. But we also see what the tax is for. Like mm. we don't for. Um, uh, JK, like junior kindergarten, up to, up to grade 12, we don't pay fees. Right. If your children are in public school. Mm -hmm. I just told you about a healthcare system. What about high schools? Do they pay? They don't pay in high okay, school. Okay, so all secondary schools yes. free. Okay. Until Including the, the university. Well. Yes. Okay. So you don't pay school fees. If you don't mm -hmm. pay fees and then you pay your taxes, mm -hmm. something has to pay for something. Yeah. So I think, I, I don't think our taxes, maybe payroll tax, the challenging thing about it, or like in Nigeria, we all, when you work, you only pay federal tax, right? Mm -hmm. Particularly at payroll tax. Here, you pay payroll tax to your state, mm -hmm. which we call province, and you also pay to the government. But okay. then you also see, you pay to federal, but you also see what they do with it. What about the property tax that you pay monthly when you um, have a property here? You know, we pay property tax because the city has to run. I was just telling yeah. you when they have about snow, waste, yeah. they bring trucks mm -hmm. to clear the snow. We waste. don't pay for that. Yeah, all these they public take our garbage and they all clean, of that. So yeah. 
you see parks mm -hmm. just close to the house mm -hmm. here you see parks every mm -hmm. day they have it's to maintain sense. this yeah. park so yeah it's what we call a uh, road tax in, mm -hmm. in no it's what we call council, council tax. tax we call it council tax in that's the UK. what they use it for but you guys don't pay road tax no mm -hmm. and we don't pay tv tax or TV you don't license. pay tv license i can't even stand it i remember mm -hmm. in uk then yeah when we were schooling and they are always talking about tv license you don't pay tv license and if do you, you watch pay on your laptop they come and check yeah and we don't do, do that do you pay yet. for um your car apart from insurance what else do you pay just insurance. Maybe we we'll pay for license to renew your driver's no, license. No, how, no, no, no. It's not all the time. We we'll pay in the UK. You pay for road tax. You will pay um, for insurance, mm -hmm. and then you will also pay what they call MOT, which is something you do uh, every year to yeah. check that your car is fit to be on the road. road. Mm -hmm. something like you that. have to have all those certificates. Three of them. The standard. Western world is full of all kind of taxes because. You, Somebody has to pay. There's no free mm. thing here other than the air that you breathe, right? Mm. So if you're going to get NHS, free medical care and free school, you have to pay and this taxes go into it. So. so if you have to do it all again, do you think it's the right choice that you made coming I'm here? I'm glad that I made this decision. Wow. Like I look back and I'm like, God, I thank you. When we were making it, we were like, oh my God, you know, your heart is are you making the right decision. But when I look at Nigeria right now, I'm like, I'm glad I made this decision. <laughs> glad you got out. I'm yeah. so glad I made yeah. it. I miss my people back home. I love my country, but right now this is home. This is home. This is home. It's going to be my home soon. This <laughs> we are waiting me. for you. It's going to be my home soon. I'm moving to Canada. This no is joke. The place to we be. are moving to Canada. I've already told my husband. Well, once I get home, we're just going to coordinate and see what we, we have to set up and then try to find our way here and how to get yeah. a job. We are moving. I love, love Canada. Anyway, let's just round it up by saying Happy Canada's Day! Thank you, guys. Yeah, and thank you very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, there's a red button down there. Please ensure that you support me by clicking on the red button. If you, all of you that ask me in the UK when I'm coming home, I'm not coming home. <laughs> this is my home. Now, you see, I'm wearing Canada. Can you see? This is Canada. I'm doing Canada Day with them today. Canada Today is Canada Day. Day. I'm not coming. I bet you push a whole UK for me for now. I'll find a place that I love more. So I'm, I'm here. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys, for watching. I love you. Bye bye. bye.